Mangel, and welcome to Buried Treasures. I'm starting this live stream to explore the Buried Treasures in Apple II educational software that is now being preserved and archived. I will also explore other items of interest which were developed for other vintage computer systems. My first computer was an Apple IIe in 1983, and it led to a career in application development and software architecture. So I'm doing this live stream to share the experience of exploring software that was created for education in the 20th century. Today, we're going to look at two software packages for the Apple II, which were meant to help students with reading comprehension of the book A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline LaEngle. Now I need to make a disclaimer, I am not an educator. So the acronym on the internet for that is I-A-N-A-E. And I am also not a lawyer. I'll let you think about the acronym for that one. But one thing that I can tell you is never sign a contract printed with the print shop. This is from a practicum paper. I wanna thank uh, Peter B on Twitter for pointing this out. Um, so somebody um, did a paper where they did uh, work with students who had mental difficulties and um, they wrote a paper seeing how effective Apple software was for helping them learn reading comprehension. So they had a sign this saying, I would like to learn a strategy that would help me with understanding and remembering what I read. I will come prepared to work to the best of my ability. When I complete my work, my teacher will have free choice activities from which I may choose. Now they had to sign that contract in order to get this cool t-shirt. I can rap. <laughs> that was the name of the program, uh, reading program. Okay, now let's just go scroll back a little bit and see what other materials the students got. They had a page where they could store their personal thoughts. They had summaries. Uh, write the main idea of each chapter that you read. Remember to do it as soon as possible so that the ideas are fresh in your mind. Okay. And uh, there's a print shop graphic and character relationships. Place the name of your main characters in a triangle. Put the names of other characters in circles. Draw lines between the characters that have a relationship. On the lines, write what kind of relationship they have. Friend, mother, brother, etc. And then they had a page like this. The five W's and an H can help you summarize a chapter or a whole book. Answer your five W's and H by putting keywords in the block below the appropriate question. So who, what, when, why, where, and how. Now notice that um, this comes from the Educational Resource Information Center. It has nothing to do with me. My name's Eric, yeah. Um, so let's see, okay, vocabulary words. So you had a nice page like this to write down all your vocabulary words. So this is back in the 1980s, actually 1982 and 1984. And then you printed your name up there on the underscores with the pencil, uh, your journal for, okay, for the book name, I guess. So yeah, they, it's a Newbery Honor Award book. Okay, so we were just looking at the appendices, but uh, there's a whole paper here showing, uh, talking about the methodology. Here's the author, Maurice Ann Piquette. A multimodal approach to remedying media idea dif comprehension difficulties and behavior oriented students from 1994 for a master of science. Okay, and it's actually very interesting. Uh, this is the abstract uh, of the ages of the students evaluated and the time of the program. And in the appendices, I uh, just wanna show you some more in the appendices, the actual research methodology used. So here, they, they scored the students based on how well they could paraphrase, um, evaluating their on specific paragraphs and calculating points uh, to f come up with a mastery percent. And then uh, up here, there are some progress charts. So this is a student who did very well. So you could see before we had Excel, we had to actually draw graphs by putting little X's on these lines and connecting them with a marker. And then you could see some other students, another student who did pretty well back in May 94. Student C had some problems finishing. 
Student B started, didn't do too well, and student A also had problems. Okay, so that's the sample chart. Let's see what else we have. Yeah, okay, so you're seeing uh, educational research, and that's where the chart comes from, University of Kansas. Okay, they should come to Kansas Fest. All right, so what do we have to look at today? Okay, this is the 1982 software that was used in that study. It's about the book A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline LaEngle. I first read this book in the fifth grade, and at that time it was difficult for me to follow the story. I was interested in the science of travel by warping space, which was explained in the book. In 2003, a movie was made which takes the audience along on the adventures of Meg, Charles Wallace, and Calvin, and it dramatizes the experience with visual effects, music, and realistic acting that draws the audience into the emotions of the characters. I highly recommend the movie for anyone who wants to experience the whole story in two hours. It will make the book easier to comprehend as it go, the book goes into much more depth. The story also touches on spiritual principles which are universal in nature and do not reflect the beliefs of any specific religion. The story and the movie need to be understood in the context of the times when they were written and produced, and students may need help relating aspects of the story to modern society. I once saw an interview with the author, and I was very impressed by her belief that children can understand scientific and technical concepts presented in the story without much explanation. So I'm very happy that she believed in young people and their abilities. Okay, so this is the software from 1982, and it is available on the Internet Archive for anybody who wants to use it. And I will also demonstrate a similar uh, software from 1986, which has more graphics. But I feel like um, the text features of this 1982 software were very good, and uh, if you have motivated students, it can help them. Okay, let's take a look at the options available in this text version of the software from 1982. So we'll start with comprehension, and it's loading from the disk now. Okay, uh, yes, let's look at the instructions. Okay, a sentence based on an event in the story will appear on the screen. Press the letter in front of the word or phrase that best completes the sentence. If you answer incorrectly, you'll be given a hint in a second try. All right, so let's see what happens when you answer incorrectly. So the word that upset Miss Murray was tesseract, but say it was camazots, incorrect. Hint, it is a special way of traveling. Okay, so then if I get it right, let's see what it does. You are correct. Okay, let's see. Who changes into a winged creature? I'd like to see Meg change into that. No, she looked like an old woman before she changed. Well, that must be Miss Murray. Wrong, the correct answer is A. So that's the limited type of feedback that programmers built into these drill and practice quizzes. So let's get one right. Charles, Wallace, Meg, and Calvin see something in the happy medium's crystal ball. They see the dark thing. Okay, now let's get, let's just keep going to the end and see what we get here. Mrs. Watts, it was once a star. Okay, Meg, Calvin, and Charles Wallace go to Camazots to rescue Mr. Murray. And Meg uses Mrs. Who's glasses to get through the transparent wall to reach her father. Okay. It is not a computer, it's a brain, but let's say we try computer. It's living and it thinks, okay. Uh, is it a brain? Yeah, okay. Okay, so they got hints for each one of these. Uh, when Mr. Murray, Calvin, and Meg Tesser from Camazots, Meg seems to be frozen. Who returns to Camazots to save Charles Wallace? Meg. And 10. Mrs. Witch tells Meg, you have something that it has not. And of course, that is love. Okay, I don't have a printer, but I'll see my results now. So copy down these sentences. Okay, get your notebook out and a pencil. Okay, so see chapter four. That is cool. You, you have a reference to find out where you got things wrong so you can reread it. Okay, I got nine correct, but seven correct on the first try. So the ones that I got wrong twice are reviewed. 
Okay, I don't want to try that again. Now let's explore the other pieces of this software. Okay, vocabulary. Okay, so this book introduced some big words. Let's see the instructions. Okay, press the letter. You got two chances. Okay, same idea. Okay, now my zoom is blocking this. Let's move my zoom out of the way. Okay, Meg's principal said she is the most belligerent. Okay, she's ready to fight. Okay, it is difficult for Mrs. Witch to materialize. Okay, so this, let's make it wrong. Nope, okay. It's difficult for her to travel through time. No, it was C. Okay, so it should remind us of that question at the end. Let's get one wrong. Okay, to the vulnerable means valuable, right? No. Okay, let's get it right. Likely to be hurt. Okay, let's go through the rest of them. Oh boy, everyone's learned to submit to it. Yeah, pay taxes to it. That's what we're going through here. All right, so give in to it. <laughs> well, that's also what we're going through in the world now. Okay, Charles says it sometimes calls itself the happiest sadist. Oh boy, what are we teaching these kids? All right. Meg thinks her father should be omnipotent. Mm. Okay. Aunt Beast has many tentacles. What are tentacles? Okay, Aunt B says the black thing does not relinquish its victims willingly. Relinquish, give up. And Calvin thinks it has hypnotized Charles Wallace. Hmm, you could be tied to a chair and be hypnotized. Okay, in a trance. Okay, at the end of the story, Meg feels joy and love that are tangible. Okay, well, all of those could be tangible, right? <laughs> okay. Do we have a printer? I wish I did. Okay, so I have to learn materialize and it doesn't give me a clue where to look. Okay. So I guess they tracked the progress of each student based on the number right, wrong, and right on, wrong on the first try, whatever. Okay, now this is a tough part, sequence, because you have to read all the statements and put them in the order of the story. Okay, you have sentences that you have to arrange in order. Okay, yep, we got some instructions. See, I don't think this would work today for kids to read instructions like this. All right, the computer will help you twice. If you get it wrong the third time, it shows you the correct order. I might need that. Okay, Meg grows a great deal during her adventure. Okay, let's see if we could do this. I think she's sent to the principal first, and you have to press return after each one. And then when does she meet Calvin? Um, I think it's after that, yep. And she has to test her. Yeah, she has to test her. And then use Mrs. Who's glasses and then save Charles Wallace. Did I get it? No, I don't want to change my order. But what if I did? I'll do that on the next one. Correct, in low res graphics. And I think they changed the colors. We'll see that. Okay, let's just do something and get it wrong. A, B, C, D, E. And I don't, yeah, I want to change my order. Okay, so that's cool. I could just do that. Let's do E, D, C, B, A and get it wrong. No, none of the statements are in order. Uh-oh, let's just get help from the computer. C, D, E, A, B. And here's your order. No, I don't want to change the order. A and D are in the correct order. They meet the women and they free Mr. Murray, but then this is your order. So I have to try it again. Oh, A, D. Okay, so A, well, okay. So they meet them. They test her to Uriel. They explore Camazots. Now, when do they return? That's probably at the end, so it's D and B. Okay, that's my order. Apple News Bulletin, you have every sentence in correct order. Oh, this is so cool that they did this, so the marquee display. But yeah, so the, uh, the kids of 1982 got excited by that. Okay, correct with one try on the first and correct with three tries, so that's pretty cool. All right, and try again as much as you need to. So it's interesting to track what kids actually did 
And even today, if kids use this, track exactly what they do. Okay, yes, yeah, spy on the kids, please. <laughs> now they're used to being spied on. That's what we're training them for. Okay, a crossword puzzle. Now this is an interesting crossword puzzle because logically you would think you say, okay, one across, two down, but here you have to go across or down and then the number. So if, if you want to do one down, you have to type down and then one. And I got that wrong a few times. So what's the word to travel through time? Tesser. Okay, let's try uh, four. Okay, so four across is what I wanna do across. Four, and I wanna get it wrong. Uh, she was once a bull. Okay, and let's get the rest right. Children ride this person to, okay, so you have to do down to, so it's forgiving. And let's see, what is the word? The children ride this person, what's it? What is, yeah, if I spell it wrong, what's gonna happen? Right, let's see how it handles that. Any feedback it gives you, three. Okay, down three, Meg's friend, uh, Calvin. And let's do down six, Meg Murray. And down, there's no seven down, it's an eight, okay, yeah. All right, eight down, she gives Meg her glasses, who? The owl from Sherwood Forest, who? All right, two, Charles. Okay, so I have to do across, two, Wallace, and across, uh, five, the happy medium. See, we didn't have autocorrect spelling back then. Uh, across seven, Sandy and Denny's are twins. And nine, uh, no, across nine is love. All right, am I done? I'm finished. All right, help me. Down one is correct, so it goes one word by word. Down two is not correct. The correct answer is what's it? W-H-A-T-I-S, okay, what is? All right, and down three is correct. Calvin, Murray, and eight is who? And two, what's it? Oh, two across, okay, two across was Wallace, four across was a star, I got that wrong. So it fixes it for you in the puzzle, and medium, and twin. So this is a crossword puzzle using Apple text and inverse numbers. Okay, so I don't think you'd get any more feedback if you had a printer, but here, this is good. So copy your clues down. The children ride on this person to Uriel, and Watsit was once a... Okay, so um, they're not giving you four dashes, they're just giving you a fill in the blank here. But that's good, so kids can uh, read up again and try it again later. Okay, or right away, try it again all you want. Okay, so this was the theory of computer-aided education. So these were the programs that they gave you in this disc. And end option, that's weird. You should just say end or exit. Okay, I hit end, and do I want to use another diskette? Okay, what if I say no? Turn the computer off and it reboots. <laughs> so there was some uh, reset vector or automatic reset uh, on end, something weird like that going on. So this is the way it boots up. Skill Burster, 1982 from Pleasantville. So is that the movie Pleasantville? Okay, next we're going to look at the other disk. Okay, so let's take a look at Charles's vocabulary. Hi, I'm Charles Wallace Murray. Because of my vocabulary, I was chosen to make sure that some of the words in A Wrinkle in Time are clear to you. Choose the words that belong in the sentences that follow. So it's a nice high-res font and nice graphics. Okay. Our journey begins after we meet Calvin at the haunted house. The ladies use a blank, a way of traveling through space and time to take us to Uriel. I was thinking of one of the words below. So I have to type the word and look how it puts it in there. Yeah, so that's good uh, for kids, uh, spatial um, reasoning. 
Okay, Mrs. Hu finds it hard to blank, so she relies on quotations to talk to us. Yeah, I think she finds it hard to verbalize. Now, are all these words the same length? Yeah, no, they're not. So people, well, yeah, you don't know the length. Well, you know how many letters you have to put in, so kids can game the system. Mrs. Watsit takes us to the blank of Uriel's mountains. From this high point, we see the black thing for the first time. I was thinking of one of the words below. Okay, to the summit. Okay, we'll get one wrong next. Okay, our next real stop is a visit to the happy medium, who is a man in the movie. She wears a silk blank on her head and uses a crystal ball. She wears a sonnet, I'm going to say, on her head. Why not? No, it's not the word I had in mind. Let's get it wrong again. She wears nectar. Nope. Oh, you were thinking of turban. Okay. And it fills it in. And okay. After we land on Kamazots, Mrs. Watson is afraid that my pride will work against me. She is worried that my arrogance will blank me and give it power over me. Well, IT will always have power over us, by the way. Um, I was thinking of one of the words below. Okay, my arrogance will betray me. Good job. Okay, Mrs. Watson is right. I am the one in our group who submits, well, let's say gossips to it and then get it right. Okay, we'll get it right the second time, submits. Okay, it tells me to take Meg and Calvin to my father in his blank column. Now, in the movie, they really did a great job um, metaphorically showing the world of it. Um, it is something to go back and watch. Okay, I was thinking of one of the words below, dilapidated, transparent, in his transparent column. Or is he in another dimension? Hmm. Okay, when we see it, we learn that it is a blank brain, it is a disembodied brain. Ooh, I love that. That's what we're all going to be one day. Read uh, Walk Away by Cory Doctorow for more on that. To escape from it, father tessers with Meg and Calvin. Meg almost freezes during the chip, but during the trip, but she is saved by the creatures with the long tentacles on the planet where they land. Yeah, they're Wookiees, by the way. <laughs> they look like Wookiees in the movie. After Meg gets well, she returns to Kamazots and saves me from it. We test her home and are greeted by Fortinbras, <laughs> uh, the blank of our dog, as he joins our family in welcoming us blank, the exuberance of our dog. These are good words. Okay. Yeah, exuberance, uh, Alan Greenspan's irrational exuberance. That's what we were going through at the time in the 80s. I enjoyed talking with you. You got 9 out of 10. How cool. Uh, no, sorry, Charles. Oh, what's that great? Oh, you see, I wonder if that's an artifact of the game or of the emulator. Something for people to explore. Okay, adventure time. Newberry Adventure. So the book won a Newberry Award, and this, I guess they had such popularity that they really needed something. They wrote this. So these projects took a lot of work, a lot of education, research, and I bet there were conferences where people were fighting over what should be shown. Is this work or not? Okay, Meg, Charles, and Calvin are going on a journey to rescue Mr. Murray. You will have to make decisions to help them succeed in their mission. Please be careful in your choices. The ladies created a 36-hour time wrinkle. Every move takes two hours away from the time wrinkle. Oh, no. If the time expires before Mr. Murray is rescued, the group must test her back home and try again. Use the up and down arrow keys to move the box to the option of your choice. When you're sure that it is the right move, press return. Remember to take notes to help you through the adventure. So I think kids of today might be interested in something like this. If they've read the book, this is easy. It's multiple choice. 
Okay, Charles decides to go to Calvin's house. And let's see, you could use the arrows. That's up and down, or the left and right arrows. They work. Okay, so if you get it wrong, then you lose some time, I think. Okay, uh, what do I do? I'm just going to make get it wrong or right. Now, he refuses to leave because he has a compulsion to go to the haunted house. Okay, so you have to get it right. Okay, so like if you just play with it, yeah, the ladies approve Calvin, and the, you see the little animation in there. Okay, they meet, uh, they tesser to Uriel. Okay, am I getting it right? Yay, we're tessering in six color high res. On Uriel, one of the ladies must metamorph to teach them about their mission. Uh, is it Mrs. Who? Or let's see, let's try Who. Oh, she can only speak in quotations. Okay, so it's Miss, I, I thought it was Mrs. Witch, but see, that teaches you when you're taking multiple choice tests, go with your instinct. Don't second guess your instinct. Okay, Mrs. Witch has trouble materializing. That makes sense. On Uriel, one of the ladies must metamorph. Okay, so now you have to get it right. So it is uh, witch. Which witch? <laughs> okay. So what is going on here? Uh, what's it? Am I getting it wrong? Yeah, okay. So she uh, takes them. Uh, take flowers. Yes, you need your flowers in order to breathe as you cross dimensions. It's good advice for all of us. Okay. Mrs. Watsit takes the children to see the black thing. And uh, let's see, takes them to the summit. Okay. My reading comprehension, or is it Tesser? On their way to the happy medium's planet, which makes a detour to the two dimensional planet. I didn't know about that. It wasn't in the movie. But Meg Calvin and Charles cannot breathe. Mrs. Witch immediately tessers. Does she immediately tesser? Uh oh. Am I losing time here? Happy Medium shows the children of the black thing is taking over Earth. Wow, is this so true today? The children learn more about the black thing. Okay, tesser to the building. Uh, next day, tesser to Kamazots. Here we go. Time passes. <laughs> when Charles and Landon Kamazots, the ladies give them gifts. They receive glasses. Okay, I'm probably gonna lose. Ooh, Central Intelligence Building, the Central Central Intelligence, CCIA. <laughs> okay, the man with red eyes. And Charles is hypnotized. You ran out of time. All right, so there's plenty to explore in here, and it's on the Internet Archive. Well done. Okay, this is what I got to do. Turn my television off. Good advice. <laughs> Cut your cable. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching.